We're just going to get on, do this. We're not scaring, get you all sorted. Oh. John. 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 Do you remember where you are? <sighs> King's College Hospital, <laughs> London. Thank God, thank God. A major trauma centre. Hit the curb, jack life onto the verge. Have we got a good pulse? Have we got an output? You know? One of the busiest a &E departments in the world. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. No, stop! Oh! A place where love. Come on, sir. Let's go. Up you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> and loss. It's, it's all right. Unfold every single day. Ah! Don't cry. Yeah. And we'll make sure mommy stays okay. with you. Okay. Well, listen. Right, who's not busy? Squeeze that. We can't give up. I know. Come on. We've got to be strong for mum. If it is the last bit, hey. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department. Oh! Well done. In just one 24-hour period. I never cease to be amazed at the robustness of human beings. I love you. And the strength of their relationships. Love, it's a reflex. It's what you do. For many of the families, despite the devastation that they may be facing, they give unconditional love. I'm the best driver. They're not gonna like to hear that, but yeah, bring it on. You got to do when to hold them. Do when to fold them. Do when to walk away. Do when to run. All right, let's get you back around the corner. I like how they drive. Nice and smooth. I walk circles around a lot of the other, of my other pullers there. I do walk circles around them. So that's just me. You know, very, very, very toned person, very fit. Yes, I am very fit. I say I do about 25 miles a week. Easy. Driver, best one in the world. Best one in King's College. No collision, not even one. Not even a half one. All right, bud. Take it easy, okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Cool. But I'll probably take you to the ward later on. All right. See you later. All right, bud. Thank you. You're very much. No problem, nurse. Stop. Ah, oh, see, it's that bit. All right, right, yeah. Like it's tracks like these that remind me of Kill Switch. Yeah. yeah. But I, I scream. Music that's, students that's my Andre and Thomas right were skateboarding in the park after dark. <laughs> uh, if we just decided to stay in this one night. Yeah. Uh, or I just like actually like got off the skateboard and be like, no, I'm not doing it, not doing that. <laughs> but it was going to happen eventually. Like either way, I was going to skate that ramp. <laughs> She's hurt her ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Oscar. I'm one of the doctors. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm cool, thank you. Who have you brought with you? Ah, I'm a friend. Your friend. Hello. So what's happened? Well, I went the opposite way to my skateboard, and so I, my leg went like that. Right, so your leg went outside? Yeah, okay. outwards. And was it just at the ankle, or was it the whole... Like leg from the knee, or no? It's just my, just my foot. Just the foot. Yeah. Okay. And you're a keen skateboarder, then, are you? Yeah, pretty much. Are you good? Can you? Uh... 
Well, we just started today properly, so I'm kind of a beginner. Oh, so you're just starting out on there? Yeah, and I went for it. So and you weren't doing yeah. some amazing 360 or something? Not yet. No. Oh, no. Yeah. It was my idea to go skateboarding that night. I think she is a daredevil, but she's just waiting to come out, really. <laughs> she needs a little push. Down yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. When we got there, the park was closed, so we climbed over a couple of fences. <laughs> yeah, I did feel like when I was climbing over the fences, like, I've never done this before, this is so exciting, really. Are you able to move it at all? Yeah, I'm able to move my toes. Right? Tom's never done a ramp before, so I was, I was pushing it, not, not literally pushing it, but like urging her on to, to go down the ramp. So it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, so, you know. Well, I was holding on to her elbows, I was behind her, and uh, she said, no, I, Andre, I don't think I can do this. And then um, I said, yeah, yeah, just surging around, saying, yeah, you can, you can. And then uh, I let go, and then she just, it ha all happened so quickly, she just fell. The fire brigade had to force the park gates open to allow paramedics to transfer her to King's. Can you bring your toes up towards your nose? It's just on the top when I start to bend it backwards. Yeah. It's not so hard, yeah. Sure. OK. All right. It is painful over the bone there, so I think we'll get an X-ray for you. Yeah? OK. And make sure that there's nothing broken. May well be that it's just a sprain, but I think it's worth, worth getting an X-ray just to be sure. Does that yeah. sound all right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. No worries. Hello, King's A&E. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Hems Red Phone. Hems Red Phone, 10 minutes. That's Hems Red Phone, 10 minutes. Mmm, the Red Phone. I should admit this, I quite like that. And that's why I do this job. Oh, hello. Um, it's one of the resource nurses. Can I have the trauma team to A&E resource in 10 minutes, please? Right, what have we got coming in, then? Road traffic, collision, query chest, abdomen, pelvis injuries that would be pretty uh, nasty. The earlier you intervene, the better. Treatment is far better when preparation is made. The seven P's of military, you heard that? Proper pre planning prevents piss poor performance. We got a sharp spin anyway, we have good. You've done it. More spotted, thank you. Charles, are you happy to. I'm happy, I can do B or C, which do you prefer? Can you pass scan? No. no. Okay, so okay. B and C? B and C. Certainly. Yeah. 39 year old Neil was driving a friend's sports car when he was involved in a head on collision with another vehicle near Canterbury, Kent. Okay, go on. Should we get him over onto the bed first and then I'll give a handover? Okay, ready, steady, move. This is Neil, he's a 39 year old gentleman. Involved in a high speed RTC car versus car. Point impact on the right driver's side, crumple zone gone. Injuries from top of toes, but a right trabicular and chest rib fractures, right liver, in, uh, liver injury and pelvic injury, and is also complaining of lower back pain. It took 27 minutes to cut him from the wreckage and be stabilised enough to travel 59 miles to King's. Interventions, he was extricated from a car with ketamine, uh, two IV access, pelvic splint packaged. Stable. We've already got two decent sized handlers. Should we get a femoral stab and get those buds quickly? Can we get some um, IV paracetamol and some more morphine, please? Right, Neil, let's give you some pain relief now, mate. Okay, take a little while for it to kick in. Sharp scratch, mate, sorry. Airways patent. The specific thing about the head-on collision, you add the two speeds together, the vehicles, for the aggregate speed. So often, if that's a dual carriageway motorway, you could be well over 100 miles an hour. But you crash at 90, the metal bodywork is going to squeeze on you. The thing now looks more like a tin of sardines than it did a car for 10 minutes earlier. So there's that crush. Okay, mate, your head nice and still for the time being, though. Okay, just going to put a scanner on your belly, my friend. The biggest threat to life is uncontrolled hemorrhage. 
you're zooming along at 95 miles an hour and you suddenly hit the brick wall equivalent. So you go from 95 to zero in the blink of an eye. Your organs want to carry on going. So it's very common to see shearing type injuries. Internal bleeding is a quite an important thing to pick up early in these situations. It's not the easiest scan, but I suspect it's the fast positive on the top right. I'm getting difficult picking up the kidney, but a lot of fluid looking around it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Can we get him off the scoop and have another go? Okay, mate. Just try and keep your head nice and still for the time being, though. Okay, just bracing again, guys. Ready, steady, brace, and down. Go on, mate. Have a feel of your tummy. Let me know if you've got any pain anywhere. Oh, yeah. Right-sided belly pain. Jesus. Oh, God. Okay, Neil, where's the worst of the pain at the moment? Um, chest and lower back. Okay, out of ten? Um, chest, five, lower back, eight. Okay. We're always very, very careful to assess the spine. Injury to the spinal cord causes nerve injury, i.e. paralysis. I suspect that's what most patients are most afraid of. Okay, try and get the rest of the scan completed this one as soon as the blood's done. Neil, do you want us to ring anyone to tell, tell them that you're here? Yeah, my wife. Your wife? Uh, got What's her name? Got Karen. Karen. Yeah. I couldn't go to school tomorrow. Why not? It's just, I would be so tired. I've got your drugs and suction. Suction, and I've got the last five of morphine, yeah? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, we're ready. They said five minutes, three minutes ago now. Two minutes ago. Right. Hang on, guys. She wants him on the life pack. They want him on the life pack. I'm happy with it. 18 minutes since arriving in Resus, car accident victim Neil is stable enough for the trauma team to take him to the CT scanner. His wife Karen has arrived along with Simon, his boss at Volvo's development training centre. Okay, Neil. No. We're going to just head into the room in a moment, but we'll keep an eye on you whilst you have the scan. You need to keep your head nice and still, though, okay? You've got the collar on until we're sure that you've not got a problem with your neck. Don't move your head, okay? It's not worth the risk, mate, all right? So, say, we're just behind the glass here, just watching, all right, mate? If you've just been pulled out of a smash, you must be thinking, am I going to survive? Am I going to walk out of here? Am I going to walk out of here intact? It's a yes or a no when you come out of that scanner. So it's very easy to imagine the worst case scenario. lost two years of my creative sick leave. I'm one of the few doctors who spend a lot of time on the other side. My particular problem was neurological. I suffered from a complex pain syndrome uh, due to inflammation of the nerves. Pain that you get from things that shouldn't cause you pain, light touch, 
one of the very worst things for me was I couldn't wear trousers. I was effectively housebound because I couldn't get dressed. For an active guy who loves coming to work and loves doing things, being housebound was, was difficult, it was very difficult. The main thing that I remember thinking about the whole illness is that this shouldn't be happening to me. Just me or was that a very big liver? It was the thought of what does it mean for my career, what does it mean for me, what does it mean for my family. Patients undergoing a CT trauma scan are probably thinking the same. What is this going to show? What is it going to mean for me? Hello, Annie Mae. You're right. Um, Neil's been in a car accident. I, 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 I didn't know anything before I got here. Um, police turned up at the house. Um, and, and it happened down in Canterbury. They, they had to cut him out of the car. Um, they, they blued and tooed him. Um, so um, we're, we're Simon, Simon, Neil's boss, drove me here. We're in London in a specialist hospital um, because, because they thought it was life-threatening. Twenty-year-old Thomasine is waiting for the results of her X-ray. Hello, how are you getting on? Hi. I'm cool. Right, the X-ray's back, and there is a break. I'm afraid. Oh. So that's where all the pain and swellings come from. Yeah. So what we'll do for you? I'll put a plaster on at the moment for today, and then we'll get an appointment for you to come back and see the specialist bone doctors, the orthopaedic doctors, mm -hmm. tomorrow. Home with some crutches and some painkillers, yeah. and book an appointment for you for tomorrow. All right, then. Does that sound cool. all right? Yeah. And there's going to be no skateboarding for a while, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, nice see to you meet you too. Bye now. So, yeah. It's broken. Oh. At least it's not that bad, like, when yeah. surgery or something. Yeah, good. Well, he said maybe. <laughs> I've known Andre for about four years. We met in college and we just met through that and we liked the same music, so we just kind of started talking from there, like talking about music and stuff. That's right, kids. <laughs> <laughs> he never fails to make me laugh. <laughs> I think he does know that. Like, he just makes like face expressions and like silly little things like that and just makes me laugh. Uh, you've been around me too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to tell my freaking parents, man. Yeah. Well, they're going to give you crutches, yeah? Probably. Okay. If, the, if not, then I'm like... I'll fat. carry you or something. Carry me? Yeah, yeah. Idle style. Huh? Idle style. Whatever style. <laughs> Whatever style. <laughs> <laughs> when we feel special. Yeah, yeah. Special for one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for making you wait, by the way. It's OK, babe. I'm it's here really, for you. Really cool. Got your back. Yay. Yeah. Don't have to shake my hand, don't worry. No. We're looking after you here, trying to work out what you've done. The scan will get a report in a minute. <laughs> Never had any loss of consciousness yeah. during um, this whole no. episode? You remember everything? Yes, unfortunately. Okay. And did you have a headrest? Is there a high back seat to this? There's a high back seat. Okay. Yes. Did your head go forward and back? Can you recall um, any of that? I don't remember. Okay. Did you have any pain immediately in your neck, back, or anywhere? No, the immediate pain was in my chest, so I just couldn't breathe off the accident. Okay, right. just keep your head nice and still. Nice and still, man. So yes, yes and no, rather than nodding and shaking. Okay, so that's all right. So you say your back hurt, so you did get pain in your back at some point. Yes, yeah, so that sort of came later. The initial pain was. Try not to wiggle too much. The initial pain was in my chest. Sleep on. Yeah, might be. And um, the longer I sat there, the, the worse my back got. Turn her anywhere I'm touching, particularly. Keep Don't shake still. your head, sweetheart. 
that bother you anywhere? No. No, it's fine. Okay, are you in significant pain anywhere else at the moment or not? No, not at the moment. No. Your chin on your chest, don't sit up. How does that feel? It's fine. Okay, all right, so I think your neck is fine. I don't want you moving because we're not sure about your back yet. Right. All right, so that's all good news. Lovely. Well, well done. I've worked with Volvo for 16 years. I've always wanted to be around cars, and even before I could drive, I had cars at home that I would take apart and do up and put back together. And I uh, started my apprenticeship when I was 16 uh, with Mercedes-Benz. So I was straight on to straight on to my tools then. And I've just always had a passion for, for cars and cars and bikes. I passed my test when I was 19, so I've been driving for, for 20 years this year. I did pass the first time. I had four lessons, including the day of my test. I've always had a, a passion for anything with an engine in it, whether it's a, a motorbike, a car, or even a lawnmower. So, um, yeah, so driving's a big part of my life, and I do a lot of it as well. I'm just going to give you another painkiller, a different one. It's not um, morphine. It's um, a really strong ibuprofen. You're all right with ibuprofen, usually? Yeah. Cool. Well, hopefully I'll get out tonight at night, seriously. <laughs> well, you've got a broken leg. How are you going to walk? <laughs> I don't know. You can stay at mine if you want. Please. <laughs> no, you cannot stay at mine. Are you going to take those off tonight when you get home? Yeah. Hold on, scissors. Yeah. If you don't mind wearing boys' trousers for a day. Obviously, I don't have girls' jeans at home. Yeah. But we'll work something out. Nice loading breaths. Thomasine is having a temporary cast on her ankle. She will see the orthopaedic doctors in the morning. You right there? Well done. Yeah. I'm just going to press a little bit, OK? Sorry. Breaths. Tell a distractor, tell her a funny joke. No really cheesy pickup lines. Oh. Yeah. Come on then. Yeah. Did it hurt oh. when you fell from heaven? Papa, papa. Oh yeah. Are you a parking ticket? Because you got fine written all over you. <laughs> we have been mistaken for a couple before, quite a few times actually. But I think it's just because we're awesome friends. So that's how we are next to each other. All right, try it now. Andre's very loyal. I am the kind of the guy who will stick by you till the end. He's he's really cool. Is it in? Yeah, it's in. Okay, it. okay. Definitely one of my best friends, and always will be because he's. I'm never gonna give him up, really. He's he's such a cool guy. I can't lose him as a friend. <laughs> Like, a, like an old lady now. <laughs> Quite literally. How it was all about like taking the piss out of me, like, oh, you're so old and gonna be crutches soon and you're not in. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah it's, it's a form of exercise, but it's boxing as well, as well as doing jumping jacks and you... Right, yeah. I think when you look quite young and you're obviously a young doctor, you can go in and see an elderly lady who says, oh, you're young enough to be my grandson, and that's fine, because you are obviously young enough to be her grandson, and that's not meant in a derogatory way, that's just a statement of fact. But then sometimes there are people who kind of use it against you, and it tends to be the sort of person who's more drunk on a Saturday night, and they say, oh, you know, does your mum even know you're here, you know? I've had Here Comes Prince Harry. Didn't know Ed Sheeran was a doctor more recently. Matthias. Hello. Come on through. I don't like being called Boris Johnson. I'm OK with Prince Harry. How can I help? I'm Oscar. I'm one of the doctors. Nice to meet you, Oscar. Uh, well, just done to uh, yourself. want to have a drink and then trying to catch a last train home and then right. that failed, so I tried to grab onto the train and right. that also failed, so I had to let it go at some point. All right, so you actually held on along yeah. kind of James Bond style. Yeah. yeah. So your hands were trapped in the doors yeah. and your face, that, how did that get hurt? Was that when you fell off, when you when let go? Or? I rolled onto the platform. Right, OK. How much have you had to drink this evening? Uh, about four. Peronis, four bottled beers, and about three Guinnesses. Right. Good party? About, yeah, it's a pretty good party. Just lean back Yeah, cool. just yeah. Let's have a little look. Can I pull this clip up? It's quite a deep cut on the top lip there. Is that very painful? Mm. Yes, a little bit. I've always been relatively careful. I don't take massive risks in terms of kind of my health and doing crazy things. When I was really young, I had one of those sort of, um, like a cart that you push which has blocks in, and I took out the blocks and started to use it as a skateboard. And so I fell hitting my head onto the sort of bar, the handlebars and um, cut the bottom of my chin. And you can still sort of see the scar there. I'm going to have a chat with the facial doctors about the one particularly on your, up on your lip, because it's a bit quite a deep yes there. I try not to judge anybody when they come in. I try not to really judge people at all. Everyone has moments of madness in their life and do bizarre things. Hello. We'll deal with the wound up here, won't they? They will do, yeah. Yeah. Is it a through and through? No, not completely, but quite deep. How did he do it? Holding on to a side of a train. Like ah, yeah. James Bond style. That old chestnut. Mm. The last train, the door's shut. Yes. He had got his hands into the door and was holding on. Right. And held on until he realised he was coming to the end of the platform and right. then let go and smashed onto the platform. Was drink involved? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's all right then. <laughs> yeah. That's OK. Phew. <laughs> Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't sort of live every minute of my life thinking, oh gosh, I won't do that because I might end up in A&E, other than the fact that I live quite close by and it would be embarrassing to end up in this A&E department. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? How are we doing? All right. Uh, quite a, a gash in your lip there. How did that happen? I uh, fell onto the platform uh, from okay. a moving train. Oh, right, OK. Trying to do a James Bond stunt. Uh-huh. Fine, OK. Well, trying to get onto a train. Yeah, in a James <laughs> Bond style. In a James Bond. A la, a la James Bond. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want it to happen to me again. <laughs> I can imagine that. OK. Let's just have a little look. Open your eyes for me. That's it. Good man. OK. Fine. So it's through and through. I wouldn't say I'm always on the lookout for a thrill, because I always do a risk assessment, which is probably different to a health and safety officer's risk assessment. And if it's relatively risky, but not risky enough to get hurt, then it's got to be done. Oh, 
Pee. Oh, I don't need to pee. After over two hours in recess, Neil goes to see his wife Karen. What the hell happens? Can't oh. spend 21 yet, so. Um, Mark and I were getting on really well today. And he said, Do you want to go out on it? I said, Yeah, come on. He said, You drive. And we went up the top of the road. He said, Come on, you drive it back. 60 miles an hour, A road, down the hill, round the bend. And an old S40 overtook the bus. And I had it I'd head on at about 60 miles an hour. I said, Nowhere to go, honey. Oh, it was a proper one. Yeah. And then we fucking go big bang. I remember going up in the air because we hit him sort of off, off, offset from. He went over it and threw them onto the grass that side of the road. I went up in the air, being much lighter, and then landed nose 45 degrees into a fence this side. So in the ambulance, it was horrible. So much pain in the ambulance. It's horrible because everyone talks about you as if you're not there, you're just still here and everything. But of course, the police. You know, one of us says to see and they close the road and because then they ask the question, is it, is it life threatening and the paramedic said potentially. Oh God, I don't want to hear that. Stuck in a car. You like to think that you have a, an element of control over your life at, at any given time. Um, in that particular situation, that, that, that control is taken away from you. Um, uh, uh, from the moment the, 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 the uh, emergency services arrived, I had very little control over 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 what was going to happen, um, and um, and that's quite a quite a strange feeling because you have to put your trust in in, in the other people. Sorry. You say sorry. It's okay. It's okay. There's, nowhere, okay. there's nowhere to go. Mm. falling coconuts every year than shark attacks. <laughs> we share 70% of our DNA with slugs. <laughs> Where do they get these fat things? I don't know. An octopus's testicles are located in its head. <laughs> Testy head. <laughs> Sweetheart. Okay, yeah. I've spoken to the X-ray doctors. Yes. Okay, and it looks like you've got two main problems. Right. One of them is the pain that's coming from your chest. Yeah. Looks like you have fractured your breastbone. Right. Okay, so that's broken. Yeah. Now. So you can do with that. I well, think. generally they don't do much. Yeah. It's going to have to heal generally. You've got some bruising and grazing there, but that otherwise we don't yeah. see anything broken down in your pelvic area, so that's good. Right. But what is cracked is the back. Right. Okay, one of the little backbones is crushed. So um, at the moment you have to stay nice and still and not move until we know whether that's going to be fixable yep. by you just having a support around it or whether the back doctor specialist will want to do any operation if it looks okay. like it's an unstable break. Okay. Because your spinal cord runs through yes. the backbone. And if you move too much or you move in the wrong way until we know whether it's stable, you may risk being paralyzed. I don't want to scare you. No. So we're going to keep you like this. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how long you'll be here and I'm not sure what ward you're going to. So those are the next questions. At this stage, I can't think of anything. Uh, at the moment, it's probably not until we know whether they're going to do anything with your back. Okay. Because that's the main thing. We can rinse your mouth out with a, a swab on a stick, maybe. Uh, no, don't worry. Yeah, or you can probably have some sips. Oh, a little sip. Sip will make all the difference. There were three, uh, three primary injuries. Um, I had broken my foot, and that was the that was the force of the, of the brake pedal uh, making contact with my uh, with my right foot. Um, I had a clean brake on my sternum, on my chest. Um, that was a, a big concern for the for the for the uh, hospital staff initially, because uh, whilst your sternum is not particularly important, it's what's behind it, of course, your heart and your lungs, which. Uh, which were a little more vital, but um, they were very pleased to tell me that it was a nice clean fracture uh, and, no, and no splintering. Um, so uh, that, was, that was why my, my chest was so sore. But um, 
The primary injury was I, uh, I broke my back. <laughs> Psychology can be horrendous after a big smash. Quite often, a big injury, a big car crash, even when we don't get injured, ranks as a life-changing event. If you're unfortunate enough to be severely injured, you have to get your head around dealing with disability. We specialize in the first few hours of everything. So long-term management doesn't really come into our purview. But you have to be an idiot not to know that an event like this is gonna affect somebody's life. thoroughly cleaned. He's waiting to see the facial specialist who will assess whether he needs surgery on his lip. Two hours after falling from okay. a moving train, Matthias okay, has gone into better, shock. Okay. As I was going down the platform and I could see that the train was actually going faster and the initial thoughts that come into your head is the fact that you could, you know, this is not going to end good, this is going to end in a bad way and if you are smashed against a train, a tunnel, land on the railway, which are live, elect which are live wires, then at some point there's flash, flashes of your life that uh, flash. Obviously, I th first thing I thought about my son, and then I thought there's f little flashbacks of my childhood, I don't know, beach, me and my parents building a snowman, and it was just little bits that I thought that that's strange that those things and those thoughts came into my head. I had the feeling of impending doom. It was out of my control and I could see the danger nearing, nearing, and there was no way out of it. I'll bring a bag Oh, thank you. Bowl here. Thank, thank you. you for sort of stuff. Is it just one bag? Yeah, just a big bag. It was the closest I've been in my life, I would have thought, to, to death. And as I was laying there, I could just feel a feeling of slipping away. It was quite strange. And you just feel like you're just going to pass out and not come back. As your days start to go backwards, <laughs> you probably start hoping for an afterlife a bit more and uh, look for something a bit more. You don't want your soul and your spirit to go to waste. Sorry. Stop saying sorry. It's silly. Well, let's let your mother know, don't I? Yeah, oh. don't, don't worry about that yet. No, I don't want them, no. No, don't know, that's fine. Not pushing us on. Um, I don't know how long he's going to be in for, but I don't, I don't think he's going to be walking for a little while because um, 
they, they might have to operate on his spine, they don't know yet. Um, but they're waiting for a spinal specialist to see him, to see whether um, they need to operate on his spine or not. So he's going to be in pain for a long while, yeah. I think probably the best thing to do, I will do, I think the best thing to do is we'll just wait to find out um, what the specialists say. OK, I'll give you, give you a call in the morning. All right, I'll speak to you tomorrow then. OK, bye. <laughs> Drive a Volvo. I train safety for Volvo. Um, I'm fully aware of you know of, of safety systems and how they work and how they save people's lives. I then went out in a car for half a mile with ve with very few safety systems, um, and uh, not only was was uh, was hit by another car, but it had to be a Volvo. <laughs> Neil is about to be taken to the neurosurgical unit. They will assess if his spinal fracture is stable or if he will need an operation. confused down there. 1887, yeah? Yeah, I'm sorry. For the recess. No. Should you just... Yes. Please, yes. Hi. Hi, good evening. Nurse, does he have to stay like this? Yeah? No, yeah? okay. is it all right to raise it up a little bit? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it's got to stay flat. Yeah, okay. When I was 16, 17 years old, I had a sports car and I was a maniac behind the wheel. <laughs> Didn't kill anybody, but I almost killed myself. Let's see, everything disconnected. Yep. When I used to live in the Cayman Islands, that's where I'm originally from. So I had an IROC Z28 T top and it had a big 350 five speed transmission shift. This thing was a beast. I was playing Nirvana Unplugged, that's what I was listening to took a corner doing 90 miles an hour. I lost the control of the car and it smashed into a pole and it flipped over and it landed on its top. I can remember spinning over and seeing the radio turn in with me. If you ever seen a car, you wouldn't say, no way, man. There's no way he came out of there alive. All I remember seeing was a big, white, bright, bright, white light. There was a little triangle and I went towards it and I just remember, I felt like a snake coming out of the car picked up my rear view mirror and I looked in it, my eyes was as, as, my eyes were humongous. I had a lot of hair in my head as well, you know, big old afro thing and I had twigs in it. So definitely God stuck his hand out there and said, it's not your turn yet, it's not time for you guys, there's something else I want you to do first before I take you from here and he saved me that night. That was my reality check and ever since then I went straight. <laughs> oh yeah, straight A kid, no problem. <laughs> reality check, it does take a reality check sometime to wake a person up.
it's frightening how close I came to things being very much worse. And, uh, and I have to remind myself of that on, uh, on days where I'm not feeling great. That uh, you know, there, were, there were times where they didn't uh, know if I was going to walk, let alone survive. amount of people that survive accidents at that speed, especially in, in, in small cars, is very, very low. So, um, someone was smiling down on me that day. Happy Valentine's, babes. Oh, she said yes. She said yes. Oh, I love you. Out. But yeah, you're tripping yeah, out. It's yeah. ketamine, basically. Fine. He will probably scream, but he won't remember. 